Welcome to this Fain online event. I'm here with Gennaro Contaldo to celebrate the release of your new book, Gennaro's Cucina. Welcome, Gennaro. Thank you very much. Yes, Cucina, what a beautiful name on it. Supposed to be Cucina Povera. The I was going to ask you about this. So let's, let's start. Why, what is Cucina about so people understand what Cucina Povera is? Yes, well, uh, if we put the word uh, povera, means it's for poor, poor, poor people. No, yeah. Cucina Povera is whatever you have inside the house. Yeah. You use it, you make a fantastic lunch, dinner, breakfast. So you use almost everything you have and you have just enough to do it. So yeah. how that in season, especially the, the season is so important. Remember, I was born in a, in a small village where there were no fridge, yeah. <laughs> there were no stove, there was nothing, everything, uh, whatever the season gave to you, you had to make uh, go on long, long, long way. Yeah. Bread, let's pretend bread, never throw them away bread, my goodness me, you can do so many things of with course. bread. So the art, so Cucina, the whole premise is that it's frugal, making do, is that what you'd say? It's a making do. It's a making do. Because I love, you taught me about the term Cucina Povera and I just think it's, br it's such a brilliant title, but the Cucina is very bold, isn't it? It's a really bold colour, cover, the name, everything. It's fantastic. It feels very timely. It is, it is. Actually, what uh, we do uh, every single day now, also the very, very expensive restaurant, the place, it's all come from Cucina Povera. Mm. It's the basic of Italian food. You know, let's present is the gorgette, just to give you a name in a gorgette, you know, in the summer when they all grow, you use everything in a gorgette. You can't even use the leaf, the stalk over the leaves, really? which is good. The flower of the gorgette, my God, you oh. can stop, you can feel so many things. And the gorgette, you can slice it. Yeah. And then you can dry them in the sun, because Italy are the oh, place, yeah. and they taste a little better. And then when you dry in the sun, they make fantastic, what we call a mascapeche, with the vinegar, a little bit oil you can stuff it and inside Ooh. you can mix with the bread and so and so and so this is just a gorgette that's, i've never heard of dried that's amazing i did read about a pudding i was looking through i was looking reading all the instructions and the recipes and you've got like a cake almost like a tart with the courgette and it's like a custard and you it bake is, it, it is. <gasps> and look, I, I need to try that one in the summer oh, you try that is good so don't forget that the gorgette is the family of a pumpkin yeah so pumpkins also the sweet Course. is indeed and the gorget believe me or not it's got a sweetness inside yeah. and then you can fry the gorget if you actually get few you want to make like a chips you slice like a chips a bit of salt on top and then you squeeze your hands after in very 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 nice vegetable oil mm. i always insist the vegetable oil for frying mm. extra virgin olive oil for dressing yeah or to use for something else. And then you remove the stays a lovely and crisp without they do anything. That's the whole idea behind the book, isn't it? It's about yes. having something in season, making do, making the most out of it. Um, before, I want to ask you about your childhood and what Cucina Povera meant to you. But I also want to cover, what I want to quickly say is, I love the fact the book, the chapters, the way you've done it, in terms of like, actually, it's not very meat heavy. It's lots of beans, pulses, pasta there's a bread chapter there's the right you know and actually there's only one little bit for meat as well so i think it's it's re it is really timely isn't it like people are trying to be more economical now the cost of living is very expensive it just feels really relevant so that's i think for anyone that's curious about the book i think it's got something for everyone but let's get back to your childhood what were you when you were young did you understand cucina povera or was it just the way your mama cooked or <laughs> it was just the way my mama cooked i was born in a small village in a Murphy coast called Minur. Mm. I was born 30 meters above the sea. You've been there, you, I have you, been. you came with oh me. Oh my gosh, and do you know what? I do think, I'm not just saying this because you're here, I do think it's the best bit of Amalfi because it still feels, Amalfi is very beautiful, of course it is. Everyone has heard of Capri or Positano, all these lovely places. It's all there. But Minori, it feels rich, real, it's true. It's a proper Italian it's bit. Oh. Family. It's family village so i was born there 30 meters above the sea can you imagine wow. the sea was my swimming pool that's amazing if you ask me you know do you remember who told you how to swim i don't because i always have so yeah. it's for me and the mantis because we have a beautiful mantis at the back it was my back garden you know where i used to run and uh, foraging you know and uh, 
try to pretend I'm an uncle <laughs> and the village was my playground. This is where you learn when actually it was 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, everybody had to go home. Yeah. That it still is now. And through that village, you can smell everything from left hand side crockery, knife and fork, to scream it to say, no, I don't want this pasta, I want the other <laughs> one. And then the, the people are so nice because they, in those days, there was almost, uh, do everybody do almost exactly the same uh, food, yeah. which uh, yeah, I was doing my ass because that what it was in Caesar. The difference yeah. was then every single ingredient, it was cooked in different way. Okay. So you learn also with your friend, uh, you know, when you talk, um, we first thing we talk in the morning, what are you going to have for lunch? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> you know, oh, my mother got this stuff, or the farmer brought this stuff, uh, you know, the eggs come from up the road. I'm going to tell you a little story oh, about me. the eggs. You love it. Tell me. I love your stories. It was, uh, there was uh, a kind of a trattoria, yeah. which uh, in his allotment, he had uh, quite a few chickens. Mm -hmm. Myself and uh, another two friends, we used to go home because there was a wall there. We used yeah. to bring on top of the wall and we used to come down where the chicken they are yeah. and they used to take some eggs. You know, children, <laughs> eight, 10, 11 <laughs> years old, you know, that, that is good. And then we were waiting mm -hmm. for the person to go inside there right. and collect the eggs because we love what he was saying to the chicken. <laughs> and I never forget to once say, well, it's two days, you didn't give me any eggs. You know, you why I don't have any <laughs> eggs? And then he perhaps he found one eggs we forgot. But then we almost every day, you know, we used to leave some, but then one day went to the chicken and said, if you don't give me eggs tomorrow, I said, you're gonna be in a pot. Oh no, stop it. <laughs> so we got frightened. So, we went to collect all eggs from somewhere else. And the day after we put them all there, you know, when he comes down, he finds all the eggs. He said, you go frightened. Yes, you go frightened. Yes, you were worried. Did he really think it was a they chicken? Were, sorry, I never told him. That's amazing. It was, oh, the it was poor there. chicken. I know that what. Chicken, rabbits, or whatever you had oh there, you know, they used, to, they, they used to be stable, you know, chicken, you never buy a chicken, uh, most, so of, most of the people they used to have their own chicken. Yeah, cool. There was, a, there was a village where my father was born, and they called Madonna delle Galline, mm. now we're talking about also his food. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember, because it's the only picture of me older, the chicken, when I was nine, 10 years old. So all the people for the oceans, they used to grow from little chick. They used, oh, to, yeah. they used to grow on little chicken for, for about two months, yeah. three months, because this is how long it to grow. Yeah. And then when the feast of the Madonna used to come down yeah. from the church, everybody used to throw in from the balcony, chicken, dove, guinea fowl, gonos, yeah. wherever. And they used to, there's some they used to, land on uh, Madonna and some yeah. they used to land on the floor that people collect it yeah. and then they bring out the back of the church and you went ah. there and you buy the chicken cost the chicken you know you yeah. don't keep those chicken they have to be used yeah of course and uh, I was there with the uh, with the uh, in my hands all this time to lie down never forget that yeah. that picture because that was oh. first time somebody took a picture of me standing oh. like that and I remember the camera was those old fashioned camera and a big box, don't move by the church, don't move, standing like that with the two chicken and a guinea fowl and a cockerel and a pigeon in my hands. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And I brought them home. I still can see my book, Passione. There is is it in Passione? I've got it. Is it yes, in there? Yeah, it's there. Amazing. Uh, it, was, it was really good. So we do, we did respect, you know, all the all kind of poultry, <coughs> uh, goat and everything that was, there was respect uh, for everything uh, we grow in and uh, everything we eat, a special, yeah. uh, what we call them a primizia, you know, the first, uh, you know, vegetable and uh, fruit and so and so and so. It was a kind of celebration. You knew when the figs start to come out. Yeah. 
you knew when the cherries start to come out. Yeah. You knew when the the best egg they used to lay the, the chicken. Yeah. You knew the farm which he growing the chicken or the rabbit. If he was a good person, yeah. the chicken, the rabbit, the goat, God knows, they used to taste good. Yes. And on the table it was oh when we sit on the table quite a few of us, special on the Sunday on my grandfather house it was about 25 peoples, mm. well, include the children, and under the table was cats <laughs> and a dog, meow, <laughs> because we used to throw some, some stuff like that. What we actually there was, they were talking about, you know, where they got each, each, each meals coming out. Uh, yeah. My sister was cooking, my mama was cooking, my father as well was yeah. cooking. I was it's your, your dad as well. Right, your your dad, yes. Yeah, amazing. So uh, we used to uh, say, oh my God, you know, this chicken tastes so good, or the bread yeah. tastes so good. Oh, where do you get this bread from? Uh, just up the road, you know, the farm so and so yeah. and so, the bakery. Oh yeah, he's such a lovely person. Yeah. This is why is so good. I think it's interesting isn't it for a long time I think for the last few decades because we've had ac access to almost anything all the time we've become really spoiled and I think because of things like the cost of living crisis we're now having to and, and it's good it's good we're all having to now be like hold on why am I paying this much for strawberries in December I shouldn't be eating them you know and actually I think that's the thing people are hopefully and I think they are I like to think they are slowly becoming more in tune with where their food's coming from I think people are more interested in the seasons that's exactly what you're saying like it's about making do with what you've got and actually the thing is if you don't do that you're going to pay so much more it is. and and that's that's the really beautiful thing about looking through this it's about actually I don't think I saw anything in there that wasn't something I could get from easily from a shop, supermarket, green grocers. It was all very accessible. It is. Yes. You know, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's got to be. It's got to be accessible, and it's got to work for what you've got here and now. Also, it's a celebration. You see, the anxiety to wait. Well, yeah, for the chicken. For the chicken. The anxiety. Yeah. You know, May. May is the best time for yeah. the cherries. <gasps> Well, mm. in Italy, many other countries as well, or June, you yeah. know, but the cherries, you can't wait that the yeah. cherries start to grow and then mm. you had to have a war with the birds. Yeah, you know? <laughs> uh, it's you and me. You and me, I, I, it's incredible. And everything you, you actually, you had, you respect, Yeah. like a bread, this bread that you, you never throw them away. So let's go back a bit. Tell me about your memories of what is what you're now calling cucina povera tell me what was what did it mean to you who cooked in your house who made you your meals every day well uh, my mother of course mm -hmm. you know my sister grand sister my grandma of course and my father which he was uh, we had a little shop which we used to sell a linen oh, uh, in linen and my father uh, used to go all around the Murphy coast to see customers yeah. which is above Minori, you yeah. know, Rabel, so and so. Sometimes I used to go with him as well, yeah. sometimes I did not. My grandfather as well. And uh, they used to always come back with uh, something Amazing. like a piece of cheese, oh. like a fruit, you know, and uh, salami and stuff, yeah. so and so. He used to exchange sometimes. Cool. So, yeah, bags, fresh ricotta, intramundi, lovely mozzarella. Oh, oh my God, he used to always bring down something yeah. and the bread it was incredible because yeah. there was so many uh bakery there they yeah. just make bread Amazing. and they make also other two different uh, uh kind of a bread one is like a bagel okay rant yeah which you boil it you bake it oh, okay so same. and the other one is which uh, everywhere in the mediterranean is do a which is called um, pane biscotta brown oh, bread yeah. you double bake you cut it ah, and you bake it like a biscotti as well biscotti ah, as well cool. like that. that was always 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 uh, and something. what did your mum or your granny do with those breads what sort of thing oh my god it's, it's endless sometimes if you don't have any cheese yeah they used to get two slices of hard bread those like that they used to oh, really like it. And, and they used to come down like a cheese oh. on top oh sometimes you could stop what you you used to put a bit of garlic inside, a little bit of rosemary, a breadcrumb, you saute a little bit, there is a lot of olive oil, and you spread on top all different kind of a pasta. Yeah. That was the poor man. Yeah. Uh, cheese, what yeah. we call them. Uh, 
Yes, and uh, my mother, she was she was a really good cook as well. My grandma taught my sister how to get the best flavor of everything. And so everybody, everybody, yeah. everyone, it was doing something. And did you cook? A little Were you bit, allowed? A little bit, a little bit, yes. But uh, a little things, I used to more anything observe of what they were doing. You okay. know, a child of... Uh, 10, 11 years old. Yeah. Uh, watching. Uh, you're watching, but also a child of uh, 10, 11 years old. Also, I went uh, work inside uh, uh, a kitchen because oh. this is uh, uh, how old I was. Yeah. Okay. And I stayed there for three years. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. one day my father had to go see a customer on top of the hills of the Amalfi Coast. And my mother stays inside the shop and there was too far Mm. to go up there because you had to walk, you used to have, yeah. you used to have, you used to have a lot of, we call them a fangotto, okay. a kind of a bag full of linen inside mm. because uh, people, you know, they, they, they wanted that kind of stuff and uh, I didn't actually want to go and so he stopped around his friend which had a restaurant, yeah. a Ponzo. he said, if I can, can you look after me and they would pick me up in the afternoons, yeah. uh, you know, of course I did, you know, oh. I loved the kitchen because I always, yeah. uh, I was, was looking for him and my father picked me up in the afternoon, oh. but it was three years later. <laughs> because I loved it so much. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> That's I hilarious. Lo I loved it so much <laughs> to stay there. I mean, he did in the afternoon, so the evening, but then for three years I was always there. That's this amazing. is why uh, I, I carry on and then I, you know, I become a cook. Uh, that's, that is, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, that's very funny. Now, okay, so Cucina Povera, your mama, your granny. I've been building. Tell me about how, this is one thing, when I first met, because I've known you for a long time. Uh, and for a long to, time. Long time. So, and I was really lucky that I was filming with you and Antonio, and obviously the North South. Can you tell me a bit about Cucina Povera, Povera from Italy as a whole? Like, how does it differentiate between where you are in the country? Well, it, the, the, the Cucina Povera is very regional, but it was Cucina Povera everywhere. Yeah. North, south, west, east of the island is all based on Cucina Povera. They also, in my times, they used to do exactly the same of what we used to do. Because if it's north, you know, don't forget, the north is the end mm. of Italy, mm. you know, is the beginning of the boots, yeah. Yeah, the top of the boots, yeah. the weather has changed. Yes. You know, it's not so warm than I was down the south. So there were the many, many ingredients there, yeah. based on Cucina Povera. Yeah. They used to do exactly the same, but in cook them in different way. But that was the same Cucina yeah. Povera. So more like rice? But it's more, there was more rice, more potato, you know. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of uh, polenta, yeah. lots of boiled meat, you know, roast meat, and yeah. so and so. Okay. And, you know, and then you go straight down, slowly, slowly. Don't forget, we go Liguria, full olives. You've got the seas there, the games, you know. The, They'll go collecting mushrooms, well yeah, herbs, and then you go the other side of Bruzzo, Molise. You know, they, they change as well. They, there's between, mm. you know, between South and North, of course, you get Rome. My God, almost everything everything is goes there. And then you go in South, yeah. where there was a lot of small farm growing almost at everything. Okay, so it's a little bit. It is, and then the small islands yeah. as well. Which they, they grow all the same same vegetable they grow in all yeah. their sun, but in different months, yes, you know. Cool. Then you have uh, you have a south of Italy to Rome, then you got stuff before yeah. the north of okay. Italy, you okay. see. Yeah. And uh, and uh, north always had some stuff which uh, after yeah. because okay. cold, but they grow in different. Yeah. You know the the. the it's also the influence. You see, the sound was influenced from uh, uh, from North Africa. Yeah. All the spice, all the best thing, and we use almost everything. Yeah. Sweet, very sweet. Yeah. You know, if you go in Sicily, you go cannoli Sicilian. Yeah. It, it's oh, beautiful, very so sweet. So good. And people say, but it's too sweet. I fully agree with them. Oh. Why? Because it's hot warm and sugar preserving it <coughs> yes yes you know yeah. and then the influence of north africa you know all different <coughs> biscuit pastry and stuff a filo pastry you yeah. know it's so 
And it, it's there because, you know, North Africa, all yeah. the spices come right through. And don't forget, Morocco was not too far. But then Morocco used to travel right to up the old Venice, mm. the Venetians. Oh, yeah. The, Venetia, the Venetians, you know, this is why, mm. why uh, there is a there is a maize in Italy mm. the maize we call them a grano turco okay. uh, Turkish grain which is ah. maize which is South America I believe it is yes. because everything used to come by a turkey including ah. the very famous turkey that we have on a Christmas yeah yeah over high yeah that is come by a turkey, turkey. so they call them a turkey actually turkey is I believe is American <laughs> it's North America it's not America yeah. North, North America yeah so each region has its own real each region and mm. its own cucina povera yeah i love that that's why i love reading in the book i love reading the stories behind it things like you know we think italy pasta but actually one of the chapters one of the paragraphs you were saying you know in the north actually it's much more polenta it and rice it. in the south it's more water flour and and just obviously we know the south is sunny as tomatoes and the north is more you know, white, isn't it? It's like Bianca is more like white. This white, is, less. I, believe me or not, there is a region in Liguria, above the mountains, called Cucina Bianca, white style of cooking. Yeah. Because they had a lot of potato, a lot of onions, and they had all those uh, roots, vegetables, because mm -hmm. it was high in the mountains. Uh, not many, uh, not many. I just say soft vegetable used okay. to grow. It's still growing, yeah. so and they used to do whatever you know. Yeah, it's they mash potato, mash polenta. Yeah. There's beefy uh, when they cook, you know, stracotto, the meat. They do a goat, they do a lamb, and everything has to be sealed, you know. And yeah. we lost stuff on it. Very, 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 very not heavy, delicious, but Hearty. you know, one meal. Yeah, we last all day. That's, mate, that's I, I find the whole thing so fascinating. Why don't you tell us a bit about the stories in the book because, or some of your favorite recipes or your favorite stories, because I was reading it and one thing that I just thought sounded fascinating and I have to make it, is the chocolate aubergine. <gasps> I, honestly, chocolate <laughs> beautiful. I, I just, it blows my mind. It's all easy. Tell me. It's aubergines, aubergines. <laughs> It's, it's t every time I'm making uh, the aubergines, uh, also uh, even the north of Italy, they the call like that aubergines <laughs> with the chocolate. Actually, aubergine chocolate is very delicious. I believe that recipe comes from uh, North Africa, perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, because there. Yeah. And uh, it is delicious. It's so simple to make. Okay. And actually, all the Neapolitan area, yeah. is, uh, well, talking about Campania, Almost everyone knows how to make really? aubergines with chocolate. Uh, special next village, Maiori, 15 August, is traditional oh. make the aubergines with chocolate, which oh. is easy. You slice the aubergines, yeah. you know, about half inches oh, thick, yeah. okay? Then put a bit of salt on top because the aubergines always got lots water or mm -hmm. not. Also, sometimes it can be a little bit better. Yeah. A little salt, you remove the salt, or you can grill it mm -hmm. or you can bake it okay but the best way is to do it flour yeah. egg fried yeah you move sure. it okay. so if you don't feel the aubergines then you mix sugar cocoa powder yeah okay that's good so you dip inside the the eggs you fry it as soon as it come out the street in the sugar and cocoa powder and then you move it and you mix and then because it's hot you know the aubergines and the egg will grab okay. all everything they can melt now with the leftover of uh, the 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 chocolate or meats i call them a chocolate cocoa powder or can be a chocolate powder yeah uh you you put a bit of milk inside yep. and uh, you stir it sometimes put a little bit of butter inside and then you put them on top or you get the two aubergines you fill up with all candy fruit or you can put Ooh. the ricotta inside you please yourself Ooh. again and dip them inside the the the, the, mm. the 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 eggs and then you fry again and then again you put one on top of the other chocolate and you let it stay for at least a six hour in my house it didn't even last a minute oh my goodness and then that is good and then you spread some little confetti on top the little 
traditional to put a little one thousand uh, something. Oh, hundreds and thousands. Yeah. Oh, cool. I just you spring them all on top, and Amazing. you can put all the lemon zest. Uh, yeah. So I come from place where there was plenty of lemon. It's delicious. People say, "Now this is no. you can't. Is this not taboo? It is not. I'm making it. I'm going to make it on the 15th Everything. of August because it's Fifth. it's a big day for us as well. It's the, the Assumption of the Virgin and Mary. This is, this is why. It's a big, big day. And I'm, I have to try it. I've never heard of it before. It sounds fascinating. And it is that is incredible because it's really tasty. The people have looked <laughs> and they go like that. They said, no, I can't, I can't. But then when they taste it, yeah. Uh, that's it. Wow. You see, there was a celebration for almost everything. You see, there is an old saying, you know, a wedding lasts one day, mm -hmm. you know, a big festivity yeah. one day. And if you have a, a pig, because everyone, you yeah. know, where I come from, including us, uh, we used to have a little piglet yeah. to grow a big one. And then with that one, we last two years, salami, prosciutto, yeah. preserve, the, preserve the meat. So you don't throw them away anything at all of a e pig. Even going back to chocolate aubergine, but even the pig's blood it is. with chocolate. Well, you celebrate it. Yeah. You see. So nothing gets blood, burned, does it? Blood is a life. Yeah. You celebrate it. Actually, I've done on TV a lot. On Did TV. you? Yes. Well, the chocolate um, with the blood, the pig blood. And the oh, the aubergine. Ah. Oh, no, 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 no. The pig blood. This yeah. is it. Because God, you know, yeah. in England. It's delicious. It del in England. It's delicious. In England, what do you think black puddings come from? Yeah, exactly. Anything, you can still buy. Actually, the other day I asked the butcher, I said, do you have any pig blood? Yeah. Do you have any mean powder? He said, no, we have a fresh. You know, and that, so you can still still buy everything. But that, that is good yeah. because, say, the combination of pig blood and chocolate. Yeah. Before all a modernized way of cooking, yeah. pig blood was quite often used in all, in all kitchen in England. Yeah. And... Uh, in England, they still use it, but when you actually you dispose uh, an animal, you have to do a celebration. First, you celebrate it. You have uh, like a little drink for the family mm -hmm. and say thank you. And, oh, and, yeah. and then, then when it was disposed to humanly way, because uh, remember, you had, a, had an animal, you had a pork, which you know, you're growing for so many yeah. months. Respect, you know, isn't it? Is that, so you have yeah. to have respect. Yeah. So, and uh, you celebrate that you manually way, you manually way, the yeah. way, so you do not chuck away nothing at all. Yeah. Nothing at all. And this is all part yeah. of the cucina Well, power. this is it. It's yeah. about respecting, and that's the thing, and, and I should say, the book is, is actually probably more than three quarters, I would say, vegetarian. Mo mostly, <laughs> there's no meat. But this goes back to what you're saying about the, you know, respecting the animal. It's like, actually, we do eat probably a lot too much meat nowadays. You know, actually, we of don't need is. to eat much meat. And actually, it's about respecting and, and saving your pennies, eating frugally. And then when you have got the money, you can eat the meat. And, and actually, the book, regardless of us talking about pig's blood, is actually very... You know, lots of lentils and pastas and pulses and rice. It is a cheap. It's they're cheap. nice. The nutrition, the healthy. Yeah. You know. But it's about you know, like you say, respect to the pig. But the um, talking about using the whole thing. Oh. One of the first things you taught me, and we're talking probably almost twenty years ago, um, was I was I was young and I was learning. You're still young. Oh, uh, bless Gina. you. You're too. You're too. I know when you were little girls. Were, I was little. Uh, then when you got married, and then you got beautiful My children. Are you um, just ran, I remember the first day you start to work. <laughs> was I very loud? No, you was not very <laughs> loud. <laughs> You start to put all the pot and pants oh, away. Oh yeah. And well, listen. You start at the bottom, and you have to make your way. And you can't you just come in, you know. But you taught me to use the Parmesan rind, and I'd never, you know, I'd never known. I mean, now I do it all the time, you know. But it's about, you know, you say use the whole thing, right? People go to the shops, they buy a block of Parmesan, they put it on the pasta. Delicious, very good. But the rind, the you said to me, never throw it away. And now I make a lot of um, either meat or vegetarian ragouts. I all, especially the vegetarian ones. I always put them. I save my rinds. I put it in there, and the flavour. It is indeed. Oh my goodness! You know, it's about making do all of it, and it's that's one of the best things you ever taught me. You you, you do if you make a lovely soup, right? After you make the lovely soup with all different vegetables, 
Don't be afraid to say, well, I'm going to make this special soup, but I need this vegetable. No, Italy is, is very easy. We make minestra, the word minestra, whatever you find <laughs> around. <laughs> oh, like minestrone, oh my God, yeah. I need a ah, carrot, yeah. I need this, I need that, I need that. No, you don't, minestrone, use whatever you got inside. <laughs> and then at the end, but the rhino palms, and after you make oh. minestrone, you just, or you put them at the beginning as is, or just cut them in very, very small pieces. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes, because you might keep the, the rind of a parmesan inside the fridge, they are very hard to cut. Yeah. Okay. Just put them in the oven for 20 seconds. Yeah. They soft it up, you cut right at the end, before you finish, you have all the rind of the cheese inside, to stir it a little bit, they get softed up, yeah. and when you get a spoon inside, you get the, the little bit of mm. a parmesan, and then it's uh, the vegetable which you become sweet, and the rind of of a parmesan because it's a little bit salty yeah. so it will be kind of sweet and sour and agrodolce inside your mouth oh it was honestly it was such it's such a game changer and such a revelation i think it's one of the best things Amelia romagna uh, uh that, that i never never forget i went to a uh uh casaio where they make all the parmesans and everything and there was special little packet a plastic bag they had yeah. or in a basket that you can buy just a rhyme. Oh, really? And that was telling me the story that his father used to strip out of those little strips yeah. of a parmesan and they used to put them on the side of his jacket yeah. because by by the belly it was uh, warm. <laughs> it was warm. And then now and again they used to take him out of the lucky chewing gum. <laughs> and Amazing. Then, and then <laughs> that's so cool. I love that's brilliant. That's so clever. Just like it, gnawing it. Uh, yeah. My my uh, grandfather's always got a chili in his pocket <laughs> Lovely <laughs> like chili. a green chili and he just like we goes out to the not anymore he's too old but when we used to go out the food was never quite spicy enough so he'd have his little green little chili. chili yes as well like my father it's always chili you know how can you have a breakfast with a chili in the morning it wakes you up it was, yeah, it no, but you he up. died at the age of 96. What a legend. There you go. You, remember, you remember my grandfather. I, uh, yeah, I Yeah, so picture when Jenny yeah, went there. Uh, yeah, and God bless you. Yeah, now there's chili everywhere. That's why, because of the chili. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's what we need to do. Tell, are there any of the recipes in the book that are that really stand out for you, like as your favourites or nostalgia or the story? Is there anything? They're all full of love and passion. Oh, they are. If I ask you, you got two beautiful children. <laughs> Which was okay. your favourite? Yeah, okay. What? All right. But tell me the name of the two children. I already know. I okay, know. Persephone, Electra. Electra. Which one you love the most? I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. The book has so many beautiful <laughs> recipes. Then when I get through, it's gorgeous. It's a gnocchi. You know, this is the basic of a gnocchi. Yeah, but this one. Am I right in thinking? This is me. I've done my reading. Yeah. This one's got egg. It's, yeah. got, it's an egg gnocchi that's got. Um, yeah, most of it, most of it. No, gnocchi. but you call, but you call it something. It's got something else to it, hasn't it? Yeah, is exactly. it slightly different? It is the name. Funny enough, the name is a uh, gnocchi. Here it is. It? Yeah, eggs and parmesan gnocchi. It's this one, isn't it? It is good. So it's got parmesan. Yeah, it's got it's the egg yolks, and which is why it's very orange. Is that why? It is also to make a nice gnocchi and soft. Yeah. Because I didn't put them in a book, but this is will will uh, is almost as the same. Hmm. You boil one cup of water, mm -hmm. you have one pack of, yeah, one cup of water boiling, one cup of flour, shush inside, stir it for a minute, take it ah. out, the roll it out, cut it, boil it, sage and See. butter, cook, it's so soft. So simple. Open. And that is the cucina bowl. so simple. That's just like proper bog standard cupboard stuff, isn't it? It is, but you I, don't I mean, have to have a potato. Egg, but when I say eggs, it's because, yeah, because I think most people think of it's flour and eggs, it's more like people think of potatoes, don't they? But it's just so vibrant. They look. I, when I first saw a picture, it's like, oh, they must have pumpkin in it or something. But it hasn't. It's just <laughs> beautiful. I mean, it's all. Look at it. Let's let's have a little flick through. Just like I just love the everything. Just looks so accessible. It's got patate, you know. It's like potato cake. There is one. Yeah, there. I need to make that for my husband. He's oh my God! They stuff the cabbage. You can see. Stuffed cabbage. I love stuffed cheddar. cabbage. I think cabbage Very in northern. this country gets such bad rep because I think in the so Mediterranean, good. but in England, everyone so thinks all oh, cabbage. Oh my goodness, I, I can't. I love cabbage. I love it. I love cabbage, cabbage, love cabbage. all the time. I don't look at anything. The so beans are like, yeah, look at that. So I actually made something, didn't I? I've made you something from the book. This is my kitchen. Oh, yeah. 
your kitchen, your garden kitchen, I think is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. When I first saw your kitchen garden, I just thought, so can we talk about the biscotti dine zuppo? Oh, that saying? biscotti, you brought some. I made Georgina. you some. Thank yeah. you. Mine, this is mine anyway. This is all yours. I can th we give you can us, take it all. We can give one or two, but the well, rest are it's up to you, if you have to. Um, I, I was just looking through the book and I just thought, this reminds me of the things that my granny, mean, my granny always had like a tub of homemade biscuits and I made it and it was really easy to make. I made them at six o'clock this morning with my okay. children, you know, took no time and it was so simple and it's just, they're gorgeous. I can imagine having, I want to be the mama that has a jar of them. <laughs> it is not because you get one of these biscuits, the original, the way you used to make those biscuits, you dump the biscuit yep. inside, they grow a little bit, and you give them a bite. So when you actually this one, it sucks all the milk or yeah. the coffee, whatever. Uh, mine, mine was milk. Yeah. Uh, you know so, so they kept everything inside, and when you actually oh. you bite on it, the explosions of the flavor between the biscuit, the milk, or yeah. the coffee you had. Unbelievable. Also, we used to have a, what you may call it, that zuppa. So if there was any bread left, yeah. I'm still doing that. And many other people is doing uh, as well, after be rustic bread. But yeah. also, if you have a sliced bread, it works as well. Yeah. Because it's very hot where I come from. You yes, come from the same place like, you used to slice it, and you used to put it on wood board for three days in the sun. Okay. It had to be three days. Yeah. So every evening you bring them in. Yeah. So, and those biscuits, the sun would have kissed those biscuits, I mean, those bread, all the way through. Yeah. And those, you put them in your cupboard, it would last the six months. Yeah. And then again, that was for zuppa because it was quite yeah. a art. Yeah. You put them in a bit of uh, coffee or yeah. milk, and then when you put them inside, you get an explosion of the sun ray, oh. and plus whatever you made it. That's just magic. I love, you know, I love that. I have a real issue with, I'm going off on a tangent here, but with cereal for breakfast, I do not understand it, okay? And my husband, he's English and I love him very much, but he just, he'll have a bowl of cereal. I'm like, how can you eat that for breakfast? It's bits of cardboard in a bowl. It's just, you know, for me, I mean, do you understand? You know what I'm saying? I cannot understand it. I'm like, I would rather, you know, like we try not to give our children sugar, whatever, whatever, or have sugar too much, whoever you are. But for me, a coffee, one of these, and that would be the best best breakfast. And these were like, making them was easy, and it was all cupboard stuff, flour, sugar, olive oil, there's no butter, it, you know, so simple. It's so simple. And that yes, to me yes. is a much nicer breakfast, and I can enjoy it, or your dry bread in the sun, you know, wherever And they keep us for a long time. Oh, they keep for a long time, yeah. all the dry bread. But that to me is like, oh, that's I, that to me I could eat for breakfast. But I this is a, a proper, you, <laughs> I know, but yeah, I love you for that, because, Yes, let's have a supporto. <laughs> you got a big one. If you know, fits in color. Be sure you can see. <laughs> it's fitting. It's good inside, and you go like that. Yeah. And then it is almost in a ceremony because it's said, "Well, it's ready or not ready? It's yeah. soft enough or not?" So your mind goes inside <laughs> your biscuit. It's meditation. Like, oh, meditation. All right, let's pick him up. You move it. Oh, it's dropping. I think it's ready. It's that it's fine line, isn't it? And then you eat it. <laughs> so, it, it, it isn't a ceremony. It's it is a ceremony. And then when it you is. eat it, I say, wow. In this day, I'll just put them inside and I'll leave it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know. And Let it go just, mushy. It just go a little bit mushy as well. But there was also, there are many, many different types. But this is physical. It's like a little, you've done a nice one. Like a little loaf of bread, yeah. like a little panini. As yeah. you, you, you want, almost you want to slice and put yeah. something inside. Don't do it. it won't Don't work. do it. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. I should say they're not as dry as a biscotti. No. They're sort of in between, aren't they? They're softer. But because I, I did have one for breakfast. And, I, <laughs> and the, two of those. A lighter breakfast is that. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, mine. Uh, I'm gonna have a modern too. I love. Oh yeah, of course you can have all of them. Now tell me if we're before we wrap up if you've got any advice for people that are trying to live a bit more economically or trying to be a bit more clever in the kitchen you know people are feeling the pinch what kind of advice or tips do you have well it is very important then one principal thing is, is all over the world then in this day we send everything to take away take mm. away take away yeah and 
some how much money you spend for tech way is unbelievable. Instead to do those tech way, you know, pizza, let's pretend yeah. a pizza. You know, you, you send them a tech way pizza and there comes a little pizza like that. It's quite thin. Yeah. And, you know, if you try to feed a family, you need one pizza each. Yeah. And if there is one pizza each, it costs ten pounds, or seven pounds, eight pounds. It's quite a lot. Yeah. So if you make it, so it is hardly anything. It's cheap. cheap. It's incredible. But one thing is very important to everyone. People cannot they know how to cook. If they learn a little bit the basic mm. and the respect of food, of cooking, they will not throw away anything. Yes. When you buy in the supermarket, just buy the essential, what you need, little. Don't try to buy, you know, special offer. Yeah. I don't want a special offer, yes. but they say, well, if you buy, you buy two is uh, two pounds. You know, if you buy one, is one pound <laughs> a ten, something like yeah. that. To save that, that ten pence, yeah. you buy two. But don't forget, you yeah. lose it because you not always have it. Yeah. And then you got so much stuff at the end of the week, expiring date. When you look at those food expiring date, you know, do the old day. Have a look, look them inside, mm. smell it. You know, your yeah. brain will work in on it. Yeah. I've been eating so much stuff, inspiring that, which it was not yeah. the best at. What he means? Yeah. Yogurt, the best at. Yogurt never goes off. <laughs> yeah. You know, bread. <laughs> yeah. Bread. Oh, bread. Uh, don't. Bread. Oh, uh, bread. You know, it's, you got too yeah. much bread. When you see the start to get that little bit green on bread because yeah. you didn't use it, it's your fault. <laughs> Just to remove that bit of green. Yeah. Believe me, don't do anything. Yeah. Toss to the other bit. Yeah. Or put them in the oven. In the oven. Dry, dry the bread. Yeah. And, you know, and use it. Lovely bread pudding. Oh my yeah. God. Yes. It's the place. This is it. Or a jar of breadcrumbs that you uh, can. Breadcrumbs. Crying. Straight alive. You know, your And you do everything. You know, you stuff it. You feel exactly the same. Make pasta. You buy a packet of pasta. It's quite so easy. Yeah. Okay. You pay two pound, three pound, depend what type of a pasta. One egg, one hundred gram of a flour. Yeah. How much it costs? Twenty pence. Yeah. Mix. Roll it out. It will feed the two people. Yeah. I don't have any eggs. It's too expensive. Don't worry. Yeah. One hundred gram of a flour. It can be two hundred. Can be three hundred. Yeah. Use water like yeah. in the south of Italy we do. Roll it out, but yeah. I don't know how to shape it. Have a look in book, have a look online, yeah. and they will tell you. It's easy. Roll it out, cut it, boil it. Yeah. It costs nothing. Nothing. And uh, this is it. So just to be very careful, whatever yeah. you have, that, you know, make sure then before you go going shopping, have a look what you got inside your fridge. Yeah. Have a look what you got on dry cabbage there. Writing okay. lists, I really right. find. Yeah. find writing. If I, you know, we're so used to be able to popping into shops whenever we want now and just pick things up. But I find when I sit down, and this doesn't happen very often, we're all very busy for every lots of we're reasons. We're not supposed to be that busy. But we're not meant to be this busy. On a Sunday, when my kids are asleep, I sit down, I'll look through the books that I want to cook from, I'll make a shopping list, and then I think, hold on, well, this this recipe has, you know, lots of carrots in it. Well, I'll buy a bag of carrots and how, what else can I, you know, it's just doing that thing. Instead of just buying things every few days and reacting, it's trying to be organised. Listen, is. I'm not an angel. I can't always do that. But I always find if I do, and I do a menu or I organise myself, it definitely, you save money and you become a bit more clever, don't you? It is, you buy just what is enough. But also... When you read a book over something, there's many ingredients, mm, and so and so yeah. and so. Okay, have a look first what you got because you can swap those ingredients. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't mean you have to use yeah. the carrots and that sweetness inside. Yeah. Find something else you have around the house. Don't use the carrots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't I've use got a butternut squash that looks a bit sad. I use Fantastic. That. Yeah, use a use butternut that. squash. Yeah. I've been cooking in many different ways. I do love it and also in the book you give different alternatives like you said oh you could use tinned lentils or you could cook them or like you said before by the aubergine you can fry it or grill it you know and I think it's just it's a, it, the one thing I'd say is I, I mean 
my other half, my husband, he's not, he loves cooking, but he's not very confident. I think it's a really good book for anyone who is, who is maybe, it's for everyone, but it's starting out because actually there's lots of gentle tips for like easy recipes. No, nothing looks difficult. Nothing looks hard. And actually I think it's a really good book for anyone who wants to get better in the kitchen actually. So, you know, I, I think it's a fun, it's cooking fantastic. Cooking is a joy. It yeah, is a joy. But cooking is love. a love. love. I said love. the word, can you imagine you come home because you've been working, you come home and you mix a little bit of flour and water to make pasta or eggs and yeah. you roll it out and the children will see you and, and then they will eat and just observe yes. you. They forget when they're grown up, you say, oh, my mother used to work in so hard that she still had the time to give us oh. fresh food. <laughs> And that is beautiful. Actually, you didn't feed them. You feed them instead of giving them the past. You feed them with lots, and lots of love. That because the memory goes on, and they will do the cycle and the same. Have a look. What You're gonna make me cry. Are. You're actually gonna make what me fruit? cry. Have a look at fruit in season. Apples. They oh they season all year round. I know. You know because they're the only reason preserved. Yeah. You know you go in the supermarket. You buy beautiful. Or cherry tomato, one on top of the other one, which is that fantastic. Only because in the back, things yeah. like that. But if you go in the market, one pound here yeah. in England, now it's one pound twenty or something like you find a bowl yeah. of uh, those cherry tomato. You know, and yeah. you learn to put them inside the fridge. Don't put them in the fridge. No, oh Leave them on a bowl. Never because they're sweet. The a strawberry as well is yeah. another one. You buy strawberry, you put them in a the fridge. When you eat those strawberry, they're cold, they're not No good. flavor. Just it works this way. Yeah. I think most of the people have been strawberry picking. Yeah. So, you, when you go to countryside, or you manage it in holiday, or because you have a children, a farm, a strawberry picking, they give you a basket, and then you collect the strawberry, uh, strawberry, and then you bring back the basket and you pay. Okay, mm -hmm. let's start there. I'll carry on after that. Like that. But the first thing you do as soon as you walk in, the strawberry <laughs> picking, boom, 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 Shh, you reach. I don't well, everybody do that. <laughs> so, and then at the end, you're fed up, you put whatever you want, you bring it there, but then when you go home, what you do wrong, you put them inside the fridge. So the day after you remove it, or perhaps a couple of days because yeah. you're full, yeah. it doesn't taste the same. No. Because you killed those strawberry <laughs> in a fridge. You know, they don't like it. They don't like it to be cold a <laughs> lot. Have you ever tried to put it's a ba basil in a fridge? Oh. Basil in a fridge, it dies as well. So sad. So leave them out. Yeah. Because if you leave them out, those the day after you looked it, so I need to, to finish those uh, strawberry, yeah. and then they're still sweet. Uh, they're not yeah. after there is one which is going a little bit bad. Yeah. So we'll chuck yeah. them away. Yeah, 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 or yeah. a few things that they're so and so. Yeah. Just make a lovely jam to things yes. like that. Don't use any sugar. Just no. let it boil to die, oh. and then spread as a fresh. Beautiful. Put them on top a bit of toast as the strawberry. Don't don't actually have a lovely crisping a toasty bread and get a strawberry, crush them on top yeah. and then you make it. This is you can do with tomato, so and so and so. But we need to, to be educated for that. I, I'm starting to get old and now I'm going back to do my roots as well, you know, and everything I look, I say, hmm, this is good, let me do this way. But uh, you as well, but well, I'm a cook. I have the experience of being cooking yeah. for gold nose for so many years. Now, what I have on me, I want to pass it on yeah. to other people through the books, through TV, through talking to people, and uh, because it's in a joy, you can't take it with you. Oh. And, uh, and uh, so what I wanted to say, there is a way to live it happily in a family. Food is everything. There is no say, eat to live, live to eat. Without them, we, we don't have to forget to those people a young boy, young children from all over the world, that they don't have excess yeah. on food. And then, for the little one they have, they still manage to make a fantastic meal. Why? Because there's a lot of love on that. There's a lot of respect oh, on food. No, no. There's a lot of respect. Do you know what? I mean, what an ending to our conversation. That is, that, I mean, I could cry. 
And also, always no, fine. I'm always it's fine. It's true. But it's true though. Like that's that's so inspiring, but also so true. Like the most simple things, as long as there's love and respect. Yes, respect. Thank respect. you. Respect is there to grow. Little seeds. See, when you have a little plant, you go seed of oh. something. You put them in a pot. And you wait for nearly two weeks and then oh it's coming out, it's coming out. <laughs> and then you sell the speed of which they give you a fruit yeah at, but then the a strawberry let's go back to a fruit and then you almost do not want to pick yeah. the strawberry <laughs> because like a little baby you put the seeds it's grown up and then at oh. the end you have it you look my god i'm good <laughs> Listen, I, I could chat to you forever. I've loved Thank our conversation. Honestly, I love you. Let me give you a hand. You know I do. I think you are one of my best and biggest mentors ever. I think you're incredible. And thank you all for watching and listening. Cucina, Gennaro's Cucina is out now. It is a fantastic book. Um, and thank you for your time, Gennaro. It's been amazing. Thank you, Georgina. Thank you. You're always close to my heart. Ditto.